The next big job is doing up the um, nut on the main shaft and getting it up to uh, tightening it up you know, to the correct torque. So I think we'll be using the same method. You know, I'll be putting the chain around the sprocket, a rear sprocket again. It's a bit more difficult this time because the sprocket's down that end and we're at this end. And so we want, you know, the vice will be here and really the gearbox will want to be hanging over the end of the bench. So uh, anyway, we'll work it out. I'm sure we do it. So it's the main shaft, main shaft nut next. Right then, here goes. I've attempted to lock the gearbox again the other way around. Obviously, this is right hand thread. And obviously the sprocket is the other side of the gearbox and makes everything. So I've had to put the vise at like a nearly 90 degree angle on the bench. But we've only got to do it up to 50 foot pounds this one rather than 90, uh, 80 on the other side. Um, due to the way the bench is and that, I'm going to have to be trying to lift rather than push down, which isn't going to do my back any good. But you know, I have no idea whether this is going to work again. No, I don't think it is, is it? Just lifting it straight over. Right, that's uh, the first thing is I need to pack that uh, gap so the gearbox doesn't get damaged by the vice. Not looking very happy that I will say that. But Come on. Oh, I put some Loctite on this nut, by the way. for a minute so we've got the main shaft nut done up to 50 foot pounds and uh, we've lock tightened it so that's good we've got both the difficult nuts the main shaft nut and the sprocket nut both done up and both torqued up so I'm happy so there we go we're getting there we've got the main shaft nut on now so uh, the last thing we have to do to this casing is we have to fit the uh, clutch uh, actuating mechanism here and then when that's on then that's the internal uh, casing fitted and then we've just got to sort the outer casing out with all the gear change and so on <clears throat> and uh, and we're done but yeah so we're nearly done anyway on this uh, internal casing just got to fit the, uh, the clutch actuating mechanism so far, so good. Okay, so now we're going to fit the uh, clutch uh, actuating mechanism onto the end of the main shaft. <clears throat> so this is what the actual uh, cable attaches to when we pull the clutch in. Uh, so we've got uh, these various bits and bobs and we'll go through them as we fit them. So um, first of all, there's a ball bearing which fits uh, in the end there and this piece fits over the end of the main shaft so what we'll do is I'm just going to pop the ball bearing there um, obviously it just keeps falling out if it's in there why is the ball bearing there well what happens is the the clutch push rod which I haven't got let's imagine this is a push rod goes on the edge 
end of that ball bearing. It comes down the main shaft all the way and goes through into the clutch in the primary chain case. So the ball bearing is there simply to stop uh, things wearing out because <clears throat> when you pull the clutch in, then the clutch push rod is going to be going round and round and round and round with the engine. Um, uh, but the um, you know this end is stationary, so obviously there'd be massive wear. So the this ball bearing is simply there so that turns with the clutch pull uh, push rod uh, and doesn't wear the push rod. Okay, so there's no push rod in at the moment. We will push that in obviously from the other side when we come to do the clutch and primary chain case. Okay, I'll just pop that there. Go on, stay there. Thank you. Uh, and then I'll put this in and try and make sure the ball bearing doesn't fall out. Be annoying if it did. You know, so it can't really. Then we have the uh, lock ring that holds that on. The lock ring has these two uh, cutaways in it. And we've got the special tool, which is very inexpensive, and that simply fits into those uh, cutaways and uh, allows you to tighten this up. I mean, you, what people do is, you know, they can use like a cold chisel or punch to push this lock ring, unscrew it and screw it. But obviously, it does quite a bit of damage to it. it doesn't really matter, but I put it's inside the gearbox. But you know, that that special tool really doesn't cost much, so it's um, it's worth getting it. Okay, and then I'm going to put a socket on that tool and then screw it in. Uh, in. Right, it's beginning to tighten up on the uh, mechanism on the shaft. Yeah. Okay, so this shaft, we want this line i'll just have to move the camera a bit uh you want it dead in line with a clutch uh, cable so this little breather here is a good indication so you want this uh that slot to be virtually dead in line just slightly to the right of this little breather here okay and then because if that's not in line then you'll get uh, you know, I get a stiff uh, clutch. So hopefully I should be able to hold this mechanism still where I want it. Get the slot in the right place. I was tightening up the lock ring. Yeah, yeah, that's about perfect, I think. So the camera's probably you know in the wrong place, but take my word for it that that is um, just if I can move the camera to the right position, but uh, it is um, just slightly to the right of that breather. Okay, so there we go. That's done up. So then we've got the ball bearing in. We've got the supporting arm in, and now we've got these the actual mechanism so we've got the lever arm and that simply slots all the way all the way in like that like a sort of bunny rabbit okay and with the sort of bunny rabbit ears sticking coming back this way this is what the cable is going to go into and it goes all the way in it might look sometimes like one of these holes lines up and there's a hole here for the bolt no those holes there i think for weight saving really so then we have this strange roller mechanism here i say strange because it's in two parts there's an inner and an outer and so the inner fits in there i will do if i get it straight yeah the inner it fits in there and then that goes in there and lines up with the hole in the uh, in the arm now the reason there's this double is because when you pull the clutch in, that roller, uh, you you want it, um, you know, you don't want any friction on it, so it's double. So the inner bit can stay on the bolt, and the outer bit can be on the lever, and they can move independently of each other. 
so creating less friction. I don't think, famous last words, it matters which side you put this bolt in from. Okay, it's so got a little nylon nut on the end of it. There we are. Yeah, so that's good. So the roll is free, and uh, let's have a look. So yeah, when we, uh, so that will be in like that, and then well, it'll be back here, and then when you lift a cable, then that will um, push on the ball bearing, which will then push on the push rod and open the clutch, hopefully. At the moment, it's just sort of hanging there loose, because there's no push rod. The ball bearing will be pushed much nearer, but that's just sitting there. Uh, so I'll put some oil on it. Put this mechanism in. No, it, it doesn't really matter, but it's quite high up in the gearbox. So um, you know, if, it, if it's been if it's left sitting for ages, obviously the oil level's about here somewhere, and the whole top end doesn't get any oil, which isn't great. But we'll give it a, when we've built the gearbox, we'll give it a good old slush around to make sure everything's got oil. So yeah, just putting some oil in, <clears throat> make sure there's some on that bearing. <coughs> Okay, there we go. And so that's all the inner finished. So what we've got now, we've got the outer casing, uh, which has all been polished up. And we've got to fit the um, actual sort of gear shift mechanism now to the inside of the casing and then put the two together.